What's up guys, Crane here from LogicLounge.com and it's time for another Aviation Facts video. Today we're going to be talking all about airport markings. Yes, those lines painted on the ground at airports actually mean something. Every single one of them means something. And we'll be doing a brief overview on a lot of the major markings so you can identify them the next time you're at an airport and kind of show off to your friends and family on what you know about airports. This is a fun little thing to see and to see how uh, the airport actually works dependent on these lines because these lines are actually the bread and butter when it comes to moving around the airport so it pays special attention to keep those lines up to date as well as keeping to those lines so first off let's start here at the gate you see that there's a red and white line etched out on the outskirts of this gate basically this means this is the gate itself. You cannot cross this red line here without some sort of permission, whether you're working on the aircraft, uh, whether you're authorized to be in there. If you go past that line, uh, that is the danger zone unless you know what you're doing because there could be a live plane with live engines that could suck you up and tear you apart and that is something that you probably don't want to happen. So it is a line that outlines the gate for ground staff to be very wary of when they are working around aircraft. Now you'll also notice this long yellow line. This is the gate's center line. This is the line that aircraft actually want to line up with when they're taxing into the gate. That will get them at a good distance to attach to the sky bridge so that it can come out, doesn't have to overextend itself. And you'll also notice that there are hash marks. These hash marks are labeled with the type codes of different aircraft. The one that we have here is an Airbus A320, so it is lined up right here with the Airbus A320 marking. This makes it so that the plane is not too far away from the sky bridge. And you see that there's different markings here and there could be more, there could be less dependent upon the uh, airport. So this is not a definitive thing that every airport has this, but there will be most of these lines here depending on what kind of gate is is. So let's start moving out from the gate here and look at other things. So we're coming out from the gate. Let's pretend we're pushing back here uh, and we notice that there's a lot of other markings here. The first off, of course, you actually have the labeled gate. So we are at gate S15 and that is gate S15. So it is labeled clearly there for aircraft to identify where they need to pull in at. You also notice some uh, yellow hash marks here. Those are kind of keep clear zones. Don't park anything in those zones. Those are what those mean. Uh, and then we'll come out here. Of course, this is painted up just like a road right here. This is actually an airport road. So it's uh, left, of course, right, of course, uh, with the dashed line. So it's just like driving down a normal road. It is vitally important that you keep to the lines of this road, plus you yield to all oncoming aircraft as they don't have the best of brakes and some things may happen, including your car getting run over. Uh, this is generally for uh, airport ground staff to move around so you won't see any normal civilians uh, on this type of road and they'll be trained thoroughly uh, on this as well. You also have these checkered markings, meaning again the outline of the road but this is uh more major markings uh rather than minor markings this is kind of when you start to get out towards the movement area so so far we've only seen things that are in the non-movement area and i'll show you the difference between a movement area and a non-movement area. So just remember that we're in a non-movement area right now. Uh, you'll see other markings here. This is something that is airport specific. So you'll see that there's a 99 here. This is actually means that it's spot 99. There are certain spots on airports that you need to report to or that you can uh, push or taxi to. This is one of those lines and how it's displayed as a 99. You also see that it looks slightly large when you look at it from top down. Uh, this is because you don't look at things top down. You look at them at a slight angle. So when you're seeing them as an aircraft would at a slight angle, it actually looks properly uh, sized up rather than being short. You also see this bar right here, this checkered bar. This is a stop bar. So that's kind of, you need a stop right here. That's where you would stop at. Uh, and then these lines right here are the taxi lines. Uh, they're solid yellow lines uh, that go every which way. They can be uh, out 
stretched in black if they can be uh, but on some airports they're just solid yellow lines and that's what those mean now Remember when I was talking about movement areas and non-movement areas? Well, this is the line that depicts a movement area and a non-movement area. So anything to the right of the solid yellow line or anything uh, that's inside of the solid yellow line is a non-movement area. That means it is not controlled federally but it is controlled by the airport itself. This allows for uh, airport logistics to go through while not compromising any of the safety or anything else that an airport may need to run. This dashed line means that anything to the right here is actually the airport uh, itself. It is federally regulated, meaning that the air traffic controllers actually control this area. So you need to listen to them. You need to uh, be on a frequency where you can hear them and you're communicating with them and there's generally a lot of training that goes into actually being able to go into a movement area over a non-movement area. So let's continue on out here uh, on our lines. We'll first take a uh, right hand turn here. Here's another stop bar right here. So if you had an aircraft that was coming out from over here, you would want to stop your aircraft right about here so it doesn't hit you. Now, let's talk about these signs here. These signs are vitally important to an airport for uh, the actual pilots to know about and to identify where they are. Anything that's black with a yellow letter means that that is the active taxiway you are on. So this means if we were to present ourselves properly, this taxiway right here is Quebec. There is no, you know, parallel taxiway here. There's one way down here, but there's one right here. It is next to it. It's black with a yellow letter. So this is taxiway Quebec. That is how you know which taxiways they are. This also means that the cross is a runway because it's in red with white lettering. Red with white lettering will always mean a runway and it will say which runway it is. Uh, it goes from left to right. So left is three, four right. And then the opposite end of the runway is one, six left. That is how you read that sign. But if you were on just a normal taxiway, we'll come over here to look at this sign. This is how that goes. So again, we have the black with yellow lettering, meaning that this is taxiway Bravo over here and left right here is Quebec. So it's yellow is an informational. This is how the runway uh, or the taxiway, excuse me, runs uh, and it will show either it's a left hand turn or it goes from both left and right. So those are the quick and dirty references to airport signage. You'll notice that the outskirts of every taxiway will be marked in blue. So blue is the edge of the taxiway. Green is the center line. Uh, the lights for the center line are actually recessed lighting. This is what they look like. They're little circles here and they light up green. Now we talked about the edge of the taxiway, a double yellow line is an edge of a taxiway. That means anything on the other side, for instance, over here is not the taxiway, but anything to the left of it is. And that's more to do with federal regulations. Again, uh, there's another one of those signs again, like I said, so here we are with three, four, right, one, six left, and this is taxiway Sierra right here. So that's taxiway Sierra. Now we'll move ourselves up and you'll see how this line starts to go from dashed with black outlines with solid. That means you're approaching a runway. So that is a clear indication, the clearest indication that you could of you are about to enter a runway, which is something that you don't want to happen if you don't have the permission to, because you could have an aircraft land on top of you. There could be just tons of things bad happening. So they want to make those markings as clear as possible. This is also a stop bar and you can see it's double dashed and double yellow line. It's kind of the boldest of bold when it comes to 
this is what it is. This is like the bread and butter when it comes to don't cross this unless you definitely have permission. So it's double yellow with a double yellow dash. The double yellow uh, is the taxiway and the double dash is the runway. That's how you can clearly see them. So we'll move our way as well. Uh, they will be painted up with the actual runway markings uh, on the ground itself painted up just so you have just that much more of an indication. Uh, you'll see that a lot of these uh, markings are double or triple done in some cases because they want you to make sure in low visibility uh, in certain situations that you know what is coming up because you can't back up an aircraft it's not something you can do and anywhere you go into could potentially be dangerous so now we're coming down here to three four right i want to show a, another uh, marking you'll see here we're on taxiway bravo as you can tell by the sign here but it says ils now, there's something called the instrument landing system, which I probably will cover in a separate video, but all you need to know is that's the automatic landing system. Aircraft themselves have the um, uncanny ability of getting in the way of ILS systems if they're in the right areas. So there are these stop bars. This is the stop bar for the ILS. So an aircraft taxiing to the runway would actually stop right here before proceeding. They wouldn't go all the way to the edge of the runway. They would come right here and stop. So you're not interfering with any of the automatic landing equipment. So for the low visibility moments, you're not interfering with aircraft landing. And that's what it looks like. It's uh, boxed with black and uh, yellow. And that's kind of how it looks uh, as you're coming down. So we'll continue our way down. We're almost to the edge of the runway, almost to the end of this video. We just have the runway markings to go over uh, and that will be it. So we're coming down to the end of the runway. I'm going to uh, take a turn here. Remember these double yellow lines mean that that's the edge of the taxiway. It means don't get your wheels over those lines because the concrete won't be hard enough. The ground may be too soft and you could sink your wheels in or you might go into a dangerous area. So it's all about keeping the aircraft safe. It's about keeping the people on the ground safe. Uh, and it's just about safety overall, pretty much. So here we are. Here's another one of these signs. We're on taxiway Bravo. This is the entrance of three, four, right? If it just says one end of it, that means you're at the end of the runway. So this is not saying three, four, right? And one, six left because we're at the end of three, four, right? So it's indicating that we are at the end of three, four, right? Again, you have the double yellow and the double yellow stop bar, meaning don't go cross this line. And we have the runway itself. Now there are a few critical points here to show. The first one here is the uh, runway's uh, threshold. This threshold area is pretty much saying don't land immediately here. Uh, you would be too close to things as the uh, indication for the edge of the runway are these white lines here. And then you see these yellow arrows right here. This means it's a pre-threshold area uh, and should only be used in the emergencies of emergencies. You shouldn't go past uh, these yellow markings at all. When you're stopping, when you're taking off, when you're taxing, you don't want to go into this area because this concrete is not gonna be hard enough and you could damage your aircraft. There are also different lights as well here and I'll try to show um, the best lights that I can because there are some lights right here. So these are kind of the approach lights. Uh, these ones right here uh, are the approach lights. You'll see that there's a series of them as they go down here. So they're, they extend out into the distance. These are approach lights. These are bright lights that pilots will see from far away that they will get themselves lined up to. And you would start your way down the aircraft. You can see that there's a series of lights here uh, that are just single lights. This is indicating the end of the actual runway itself. And then we have the threshold with these lines. The solid white line actually uh, is the outline of the actual runway itself. You have the big painted runway 
number. So three, four right is what this runway is. The three and the four indicate that it's on a about 340 degree heading or somewhat north heading. That is what the numbers mean. And right means that this is the right one runway if you were looking at it because there's a center runway and a left runway. So you want to make sure which runway you have identified. Moving on down here, we have the uh, approach markings. So basically you have the center line, which is this white dashed line, uh, which you would center your aircraft to. Then you have the touchdown zone, and that starts with these uh, three lines here. So this touchdown zone is about where it starts, where you want to get your aircraft touchdown. You can actually see that this gets darker. You can see that's the optimal touchdown zone for aircraft. Uh, these solid white boxes right here is the optimal touchdown aiming point. So that is where the pilots want to aim to touch down their wheels so that they have adequate room to stop, that they have adequate room uh, to slow down. Now, if you look over here, there are four lights. And in some instances, there may only be two lights. This is called the Pappy lights. These lights help you as a pilot to glide on the glide slope. Uh, two reds and two whites mean that you are right on the glide slope uh, you are perfect you keep with the two red and the two white these lights will change dependent upon how high or how low you are i think if i go down lower they might change to red see they change to red meaning you're too low and they'll turn to white meaning that you're too high if they're all white but you really want them as being too white and too red just like that that means you're at just the right height on the descent and those lights change dependent on your perspective to that. That's quite interesting. So you have this large touchdown zone here and that size can vary uh, depending on how long the runway is. And then you have on some airports, these markers. So you'll have uh, markers showing you how many, I believe it's hundreds of feet left. I think that's how that works. So this is, uh, I think, 10,000 feet, I think, 1,000 feet, 1,000 feet. I think that's 1,000. Then there's 900 up here and 800, 700, 600. So uh, the pilots know how far they need to stop depending on where the end of the runway is. And I think that about does it. That's kind of just the general overview of airport markings. Every airport can be different. Every airport can have a little bit of variation to this. So just take a look now that you know this basic information and see what you can conjure up on what you think an airport marking is. Uh, when you look at it, when you look at uh, how it's oriented, is it a taxi lane? Is it a driving lane? Is it a non-movement area? Is it a movement area? Uh, is it an aircraft allowed to go into it just have all of those things and it's kind of just a combination of your knowledge to look up to see what all of these markings mean you guys have any questions leave your comments in the comment section down below if you have any ideas for future uh, aviation facts videos leave them for me as well I hope this video was educational for you I hope you have a little bit better of an understanding for aircraft markings and the airport markings as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. But of course, I will see you guys in our next video.